me read some more presets on that. We have a heads up. So does that mean that we, we start stocking away our riches and food and all that? No, man. That means you gotta trust, build up your treasures in heaven. Okay. Be a safe God in that time. That's why it says Psalms chapter 62, verse 8. It says, um, trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. The Most High is a refuge for us. Surely men of low degree are vanity, and men of high degree are in lie. So the Most High is no respect of person. Right? Let me read that again, verse 8. Trust in Him at all times. He <laughs> man, you got agents out here, man. So easy to spot. You know what I'm <laughs> It says on verse 8, it says, Trust in Him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before Him. The Most High is a refuge for us. Surely men of low degree are vanity, and men of high degree are in lie. To be laid in a balance, they're altogether lighted in vanity. Trust, in, trust not in oppression, man, and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not thy heart upon them, man. Okay? Well, set your heart upon them, man. Okay? Trust the Yahweh by Shah, man. You see what I'm saying? As soon as I said that, they left. Because it's easy to spot. He saw sending agents up there. Come on. See what I'm saying? But we see, we see through you guys already, man. The Spirit of the Lord see you guys, man. See what I'm saying? Doing this vain attempt, agents trying to block out the word with this bullshit uh, music. All right? But nothing is going to prevail against this thing, man. All right? And it's just what we have to go through anyway. And trust me, it's going to get it's gonna get physical, man. See what I'm saying? When the scripture says, through much trials and tribulations shall we enter the kingdom of heaven, the most I meant that. The truth said, you're going to be persecuted. Said, mean that man when you're gonna be slandered okay your old family members the scripture says they're gonna end up handing you over betraying you man okay the love of many shall wax cold all right so read Matthew chapter 6 Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures from upon earth, where moth and rust do corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal, but rather lay up yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust do corrupt, and where no thieves do break through no steal, because your works follow you. I'm going to read that in the book of Revelation. Okay? This is what we're doing. We're building up spiritual treasures, man. Okay? 
and we're gonna receive that reward in that day. Verse 21, for where your treasure is, there your heart shall be also. So you got tra great treasure on earth, like the ones of our people that sold out to make it. You're of the world, man. And if you're of the world, you're an enemy of the Most High. All right? Verse 24. No man can serve two masters. For either you will hate the one and love the other, or else you will hold to one and despise the other. You cannot serve the Most High mm -hmm. and Mammon, which is a Syrian god, which means rich. Two you cannot do it, man. All right. So what your your pork chop eating preacher tell you on Sunday? That means what he's going against the scriptures, man, because he's teaching a prosperity doctrine, and that's not of the book, man. All right, verse 31. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? And that's mainly the time of Jacob's trouble, man. Don't think how you're going to eat in that time. If you did the work, the Lord got your back, man. All right? It says, For all these things do the Gentiles seek. Yeah, that's Esau's way of thinking, man. That's what they got doomsday preface. Stockpiling on guns, food. And you never know. They stockpiling all that for us, man. Especially the food. You may stockpile all that food. And the first day of martial law, they tackle your neighborhood. Okay, you think you're gonna stay in your neighborhood after that? Hell no. You gotta be on the run, man. Jew says you gotta be like pilgrims upon the earth, man. When this whole thing go down. All right. We in a time now where we need ultimate faith, man. Ultimate faith. Man. Verse thirty-three. But seek ye first the kingdom of the Most High, and that's what we're doing. Okay. We're seeking the kingdom of the Most High. Man. I mean, the kingdom starts with this knowledge, and that's what we have. We're building on it to receive the physical part, man. And His righteousness in all these things shall be added unto you. Verse thirty-four. Take no, take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought of itself. Sufficient unto the day is evil thereof. Okay, so making future plans according to the Most High is evil. That's what he said. What if it be the Lord's will? If we say we're gonna do something next week, you say Lord will it. Okay. Right? If it's the Most High's will, man. If it's His will, we'll do such and such. Because your life is just as a vapor, as it says in the book of James. Right? All right? You know what I'm saying? So, this, what we're doing, is not in vain, man. This is not in vain, man. I don't want to bring our scriptures, but the Spirit got me going somewhere totally different. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Zombie raccoons. <laughs> Zombie raccoons, man. All right. And like we said, you got also that bacteria. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna bring some scriptures on that, man. Okay, I'm gonna bring out these precepts. We we'll read this first. I'm gonna read the Revelation at First Corinthians chapter 15. You got people out here like, damn, this guy crazy as hell. Absolutely, we're crazy. Man. Scripture says, we're fools for Yahweh Shai's sake, man. Right? So we are insane, man. To be unwise, yeah, we are. All right? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my... 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable. All right? So nothing's supposed to stop you. All right? Always... Always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, man. So nothing, nothing, man. Right? This work is not in vain, man. You're not doing it for nothing. Scripture does say we are unprofitable servants, but you are going to receive a reward, man. 
Okay, Noah was an unprofitable servant, man. But his foolishness out there preaching got him delivered. All right? Most is not a man and he should lie. If he tell you something, he's going to do it, man. Just that men don't have patience. If you don't have patience, that means you never had faith to begin with. Okay, the Most High is a man of patience, man. Yahweh Shah was a man of patience. Okay, he had the power to change everything, but he had to go through what he had to go through. Now the scripture says he's a perfect example for us to follow, man. So if our power was patient and he had to endure, we're no different. And above all, your work is not in vain. Okay? That's what it is also written. Revelation 14, 13. And even if you pass away in this thing, it's not like in this society when you die, your treasures, that, that's why Solomon said all was vanity. Because all what he builds up got destroyed anyway. Solomon's temple is destroyed. But this right here, Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14 verse 13 And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth They saved the spirit that they may rest from their labors And their works do follow them So if you die this day, it says your works follow you Okay, your works follow you in this thing So, rock that you have about you now, that, okay Nothing we do is in vain, man. Like the Most High said, when this word go out, let me get it. Let me not quote it. I'm just gonna read it. Isaiah 55 and 11. Isaiah 55 and 11. Isaiah 55 and 11 So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth It shall not return unto me void man, But it shall accomplish that which I please And it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it man. So the word what? The word does not go out void man. Okay? Whether you people believe it or not And you know we rather you not believe it <laughs> Right? Because it's going to be that much beautiful to see the looks on you people's faces, man. When the wrath of the Lord comes upon this society. Man. When that precious dollar you trust in collapse. And it's not worth anything in that time. Then what? What you going to fall upon in that day, man? Who you going to trust in? Huh? You niggas that glory in our drug dealing. And how much money you making. Or your degrees, you women, man. Okay? They live in these lavish homes and they boast and they take advantage of Esau amenities. Would you go and trust in that time? Just that's why I brought out all the scriptures earlier about trusting in the Lord, man. Store up your treasures in heaven. Okay? Don't trust in oppression. Okay? Matter of fact, you get the book of Genesis. Right? Because them same spirits is on the planet Earth right now as we speak. You get Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6, verse 1. Drink a little water. Genesis chapter 6, verse 1. It said, And it came to pass when man began to multiply on the face of the earth, and the daughters were born unto them, the sons of the Most High, which are the Adamites, all right? This ain't talking about no angels, man. The scripture says, um, 
In the resurrection, they're like the angels in heaven. It's going to neither marry, neither given into marriage. And it also says, no flesh is of the same flesh. There's one glory to the terrestrial, and there's another glory to the celestial. So ain't no angels came down and had sex with um, women, man. That's foolishness, man. Okay, and that goes hand in hand with that bullshit called hell. All right, when you die, you go to some place in the ground. All right, it says, um, sons of the Most High, which are the Adamites, read Genesis 5. Remember, read Genesis 5 and 1. Since I quoted it, and you read it. Let's go through it. Break it down. Since I caught him, I'm reading Genesis 5 and 1. This is the book of the generations of Adam in the day that the Most High created man, and the likeness of the Most High made he him. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam. How much Adams were they? You did have one man that took on the name Adam, just like Jacob became Israel. But Adam was also talking about a group of people, also known as the sons of the Most High. Okay? Prove that he was the son of the Most High. Let me get the book of Luke, the third chapter. Okay, which is a, this is a deep breakdown in itself. I'm going to see if I could make it simple, man. Because the truth is simple. All right? He that have ears to hear, let him hear. Read Luke chapter 3. It's going into Mary's genealogy. And I jump back to Genesis 6 and 1. Luke chapter 3, verse, it says, um, let me start up. It says, which was the son of Jacob, which was the son of Isaac, which was the son of Abraham, which was the son of Thera, which was the son of Nacar. Let me read on down. Verse 37. Which was the son of Medusala, which was the son of Enoch, which was the son of Gerard, which was the son of Melid, which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of the Most High. Okay. So Adam was the son of the Most High, and the Adamites are the sons of the Most High. So now let me get back to Genesis 6. Okay? So provide a clarification on that. Read Genesis chapter 6, verse 1. Genesis 6 and 1. And it came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth, when the daughters were born unto them, the sons of the Most High, the Adamites, saw the daughters of men the other nations that they were and they were fear and he took them wives of which they, they chose which you ain't supposed to be doing that yeah you have concubines but you ain't supposed to be um, your heart is not supposed to be clinging onto the women of the other nations that's going off like Tiger Woods man his heart cleaved to these Edomite women and that led to his ruin okay you ain't supposed to be doing that's against the scriptures man you deal with them, you deal with them, you toss them to the side, man. Alright? Straight up and down, man. Because in the kingdom, we don't have concubines, man. And they just gonna be that. Sex toy. We ain't gonna be having no kids with them and family. Nah, man. You just our plaything. That's gonna be in the kingdom. Okay? But men in this society, you jinx. Your heart be clinging to these women of the other nations. And yeah, it's understandable because the so-called black woman ain't right. Her ass ain't right no way, man. She's more heathenistic than the heathen. That's why a lot of these jakes say hard to cleave unto them. But that's not supposed to be, man. Okay? Because everything is out of order, man. Anyway, it says, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. For he that is also in flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years, which nobody, hardly anybody today even reach that hole, man. And if they are, they probably, um, plug to some machine, man. Right? Now, some people in the islands and whatnot, that's that hole, because they're living off the land. But for the most part in this society, 
scripture even says seven years. It says um and they were giants, which the word there is um uh, fall, the fallen ones, right? They talk about actual giants, right? Those are about the fallen ones, man. Right? In those days, also that when the sons of the Most High came in into the daughters of men, and they bare children in them, and some became mighty men, which were old men of renown. Yeah, so let's see if I can hard in the example. Blake Griffin. Okay. His father's an Israelite, son of the Most High, and his mom is one of the daughters of men. And he's a mighty man. Okay. You got the Steph Curry's, you know, a lot of these ball players, man. Okay. Their fathers are Jakes, but their mothers are heathen. And they're men of renown. So that's what that's talking about, man. And the Most High saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And how much more so today, man? Huh? How much more so today, man? It says, um, And it repented Yahweh Shemiah that he had made man on earth, and it grieved him in his heart. And Yahweh Shemiah said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, and the repenting me that have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Ha'abah Shimei Al-Shah, man. And what was Noah? He says, And there was a generation of Noah, a just man, and perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with the Most High, man. He kept the law, his commandments, and above all, he was a preacher of righteousness, man. That's what it says, 2 Peter 2 and 5. So man was wicked back then, and the Most High did a, a, a cleansing the water. And Esau them took the rainbow and made it a homosexual symbol. He's gonna pay for that as well. All right. The scripture says America's wickedness have reached unto heaven. You are gonna take a, a a holy symbol like that and just do as you with, do as you are pleased with it. Man. We Second Peter two and five. Dropping some for pestilence after this man reading this article about that nightmare virus man it's the CDC which they got one in Long Island Atlanta everywhere and they gonna release it these airborne diseases alright they already put stuff in your food already they already put stuff in the water this is why we need to get delivered alright this is 2 Peter 2 and 5 and spare not the old world but save Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. So Noah was a preacher of righteousness. Okay, that's how he got saved by the foolishness of preaching. Man. Like I said, this nightmare virus, scripture talks about pestilences, earthquakes in diverse places. The latest one was what? California. Right? Read on. Let me get that. Man. You got these wild beasts, man. These raccoons bugging out. Okay, it's about to be. It's about to be. be it's about to be mad out here. Man. Okay, the animals is mad as fact. I'll pull that precept after. We get the book of First Chronicles. As a matter of fact, let's get Psalms. 
the Mossad did to the wicked ass Egyptians. Psalm chapter 78, verse 43. And the famine of the word is coming, man. Our people take this word lightly. It's okay. The pestilence is coming, man. Psalm 78, verse 3. Psalm 43. says Psalm 78 43 uh, he wrought his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the field of Zoan and he turned their rivers into blood read the book of Exodus 7 to 12 chapter 7 to 12 goes into the ten plagues and their floods they could not drink so the most high polluted the water there's so much that people couldn't even drink man so that was also a famine right there he said, Die what sorts of flies among them which devoured them and frogs which destroyed them. Right? He gave also their increase unto the caterpillar and the labor unto the locusts. The locusts destroyed their crops. They couldn't drink water. That's a famine, man. Right? He destroyed their vines with hail and their sycamore trees. It's like a, it's like a maple tree. With frost, so the Most High destroyed their vegetation. He killed the firstborn of their cattle. He brought hell on the ancient Egyptians, man. He brought hell on the people in the old world with the flood. All right, and he's about to bring hell on this planet Earth. There's gonna be a time of trouble that the world has never seen before, and we're gonna keep prophesying that. Okay. He gave up their cattle to the hell and their flocks to hot thunder boils. He cast upon the fierceness of his anger, wrath, and indignation and trouble by sending evil angels among them. But I thought the evil angels were in hell. The most high controlled the evil angels, man. Read about the wisdom of Solomon, the 17th chapter, when they had a period of, I think it's three days of pure darkness. They couldn't see anything, man. Not even the brightest flame. They could see anything, man. Okay, that's the king of terrors right there, Yahweh, man. He made a way to his anger. He spared not their soul from death, but gave their life over to the pestilence. Okay, these plagues, man. These diseases, man. Right? And like they said, that nightmare bacteria it kills it kills half the people that get infected. Which those are man-made diseases, man. Okay? Those are man-made diseases, man. It tells you that in Micah the second chapter. In fact, let me get that quick. Read Micah chapter two. Verse 1. It says, Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. They devise iniquity upon their bed. The elites, the CDC,
Micah 2 and 1. I'll read it again. It says, Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it, so it's in the power of their hands. All right? So earth is given into the hands of the wicked. And he's about to unleash. All right? The scripture says, when you read that again, it says what? It says, work evil upon their beds, man. But when the morning is light. Okay? When they're sleeping at night, they think of wickedness. When they wake up early in the morning, they think of wickedness, man. When you're sleeping at night, they're performing all kind of experiments, man. Out of what? This depopulation. Because according to the New World Order, they want to bring the world's population down to 500 million. So they want to kill at least 7 billion people, man. It's really the plans of the Heavenly Father anyway. Because the missile's going to kill a lot of people. Man. And you're going to have earthquakes, tsunamis when the missiles hit. It's going to be a dreadful day. Alright? Terrifying day, man. But I want to pull more precepts. First Chronicles. Really the most high is really... Sending these pestilences, man. First Chronicles chapter 21 verse 11. Let me see here. That's when King David went off by trying to number Israel so the most I send the prophet Gad but how is he going to punish him? This is what took place. That's First Chronicles chapter 21, verse 11. So Gad came to David and said unto him, Thus saith Yahweh by Shemiel Shah, Choose thee. Either three years famine, or three months be destroyed before thy foes, while that the sword of thine enemies overtake thee. Or else three days the sword of Yahweh by Shemiel Shah. Even the pestilence in the land and the angel of Yahweh Shemiah Shah destroyed throughout the coast of Israel. Now therefore advise thyself what word I shall bring again to him that sent me. And David said unto Gad, I am in great strait, problems, trials. Let me fall now into the hand of Yahweh Shemiah Shah. For very great are his mercies, and let me not fall into the hand of man. Okay? The Most High is going to give y'all over to Esau, man. Okay, the ones of our people, man. Give you over to his pestilences, give you over to his concentration camps. He's going to give you over, man. And the scripture says Esau got a, has a perfect hatred for you Jakes, man. Alright, let read on. It says, um, verse 14. So Yahweh Shimei Asha sent pestilence upon Israel. And there fell of Israel 70,000 men. Completion. And this is on his own people. And the Most High is going to do these things again. Alright? They said that what? That nightmare bacteria is in 27 states, man. 27 states, man. The Lord ain't playing games, man. It says, um, says, and the Most High sent an angel unto Jerusalem to destroy it. And he was destroying 
And Yahweh Hashem Yahshua beheld and he repented him of the evil and said to the angel that destroyed it, it is enough. Stay not thy hand. And the angel of the Lord stood upon the threshing of Oman and Jebusite. And David lifted up his eyes and saw the angel of Yahweh Hashem Yahshua stand between the earth and heaven, having drawn his sword, sword in his hand, stretched out over Jerusalem. Then David and the elders of Israel, who were clothed in sackcloth, fell upon their faces. Man. So even David was a mighty man. He was petrified, man, when the Most High stretched his hand out upon Israel, man. This is what even David said. David said unto the Most High, Is it not that I that commanded the people to be numbered? Even if I is that have sinned and have done evil indeed. But as for these sheep, what have they done? Let thine hand, I pray thee, O Yehaba, Shemiyashah, my power, be on me and for my father's house, but not on thy people that they should be plagued. Right? He said, Then the angel of the Lord, Yehaba, Yehaba, Shai, commanded Gad to say to David that David should go up and set an altar unto Yehaba, Yehaba, Shai in the threshing floor of Oman, the Jebusite. Okay? Read on. <laughs> so David was petrified when he saw that angel, that death angel, man. Okay. Read a little bit more down. It says, so after David did the sacrifice, it says, um, 27. And Yahweh Yahusha commanded the angel, and he put his sword again into his sheath. And at that time, when David saw that Yahweh Shimi Yahusha had answered him in the threshing floor of Oman, the Jebusite, then he sacrificed there. For the tabernacle of Yahweh Shimi Yahusha, which commanded Moses, made it a wilderness, and the altar burnt offering were at the season in high place of Gibeon. But David could not go before to inquire of the Most High, for he was afraid because of the sword of the angel of the Hawaii Yahusha. And King David was tougher than any man that's on the planet Earth right now. Okay? And he witnessed how the angels got down, man. So like we were saying, that's all to say, when all these terrors come upon the planet Earth, it's going to shake everybody, man. And this is what we try to prepare you, Jake, for. Prepare you for the evil day, man. Okay? Because you even had what? It's going into those, those zombie raccoons. A second. Here read his um. In Ecclesiastes chapter 39. In Ecclesiasticus 39. experimenting on them raccoons experiments in all kind of beasts man. and you jakes you're an experiment man but you're gonna have wild beasts out here Maria Ecclesiastes 39 they show you that I am legend you had lions in the street in the city man okay Ecclesiastes chapter 39 
Ecclesiastes 39, verse 28. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore stroke. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. So these spirits, when you Jake's got gunned down, okay, we gonna go into it. They appease the Most High's wrath. That means all them tornadoes and um, hurricanes that happened last year, that was appeasing the Most High's wrath. It says what? Fire and hail and famine. Which is, it is gonna be a famine. Okay, that trade war with China is gonna lead to what? Inflation. Then later on, hyperinflation. Okay, it's gonna take more dollars just to buy certain goods or products. All right, and we know the average person can't see it because you people, you're not paying attention to anything, man. They don't even look at basic news. They don't even look at world news, man. Or look at the world's economy. As men of the Lord, we got to be knowledgeable in all things. Okay? That's the job of a watchman. And that's why you can't afford to take no breaks. Because you'll have to get left behind. Man. Okay? You can't be drunk with the people of the world, man. Read on. It says... Fire and hell and famine and death. All these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts. That's the point I want to get. I'm going to pull a scripture after to show you that. Okay? And scorpions, serpents, and the sword punishing the wicked to destruction. Man. All those appease the wrath of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh. So nothing happens without the Most High giving a sanction in the heavens. Matter of fact, to prove that, I think it's 2 Kings 17 25. Second Kings chapter 17, verse 25. Let me ask you what. Second Kings 17, verse 25. So the northern kingdom got kicked out of the land, and the Assyrians um, placed implants in the land, man. Which that Samaritan woman was a part of. Read Second Kings chapter 17. Chapter 21. Second Kings 17, 21. For he rent Israel from Jeroboam from the house of David, and they made Jeroboam the son of Nabat king. And Jeroboam draped Israel from following Yahweh and made them sin a great sin. For the children of Israel walked in all the ways of Jeroboam, which he did. They departed not from them. Until Yahweh Hashem Yahshua removed Israel, the ten tribes, you Hispanics and you Native Americans, out of his sight, out of out of Israel, the land of Canaan. And he had all by his service of prophets. So yeah, man. That's what Hosea was going into, man. That's what um Amos was going into too. Amos was from the southern kingdom. Judah Ben Benjamin Levi, but the Lord sent him out to the northern kingdom to prophesy, man. And they'll tell him, Amos, go back to go back to Jerusalem, man. The northern kingdom. So the most high got y'all guys out there, man. The ten tribes. I'm gonna read on though. This is a point I'm gonna bring out soon. So Israel was until Yahweh Shemiel Shah removed Israel out of his sight. And he said, by all his servants of prophets, so was Israel carried away out of their own land to Assyria unto this day. Which is the northern kingdom, which is northern Iraq. And the scripture says they, it took a year and a half for them to get from that point to this side of the world. They didn't come to no barren straits. Alright? That's foolishness. And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon, the Ethiopians, man. And Kuna and Ea from Hamath. And 
chips of Parvina and place them. So he put implants in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And he possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. This is the point. And it was in the beginning of their dwelling there that they feared not Yahab Hashem Yahashah. Therefore Yahab Hashem Yahashah sent lions among them, which slew some of them. So the Most High sent lions, man. To slay those people, man. Because they were in the land and they weren't doing what they were supposed to be doing. They were they were converts. Okay. Read on. Wherefore they spake to the king of Assyria, saying, The nations which has removed and placed in the cities of Samaria knew not the man of the most high of the land, the power of the land. Therefore he hath sent lions among them, and behold, they slay them, because they knew not the manner of the power of the land. Then the king of the Assyrians commanded, saying, Carry thither one of the priests whom he brought from thence, and let them go and dwell there, and let them teach the manner of the power of the land. Okay? So they had to get an actual Levite to show them how to sacrifice. Because the Most High sent lions, man teeth of wild beasts okay matter of fact there's another scripture oh. Isaiah 37 you see how um, that wicked Jezebel got put to death Turn Ahab. Ahab was a simp. He allowed his woman, some nasty heathen, um, was controlling him. Man. Yeah, Second Kings chapter nine. Jezebel was wicked, man. She's the one who had um. Is he turned Ahab to kill those the four hundred prophets, man? And Elijah thought he was the only one left. That's how the Most High dealt with her. Get the book of Second Kings. they came again and told him and said this is the word of Yahab HaShem Yashad which he spake by his servant Elijah the Tishbite saying in a portion of Jezebel shall dogs eat the flesh of Jezebel man who's a wicked ass hermetic woman okay who was pretty much controlling Ahab man the dogs ate her flesh Thirty-six. Wherefore they came again 
and told them, and he said, This is the word of the Lord, Yahweh Yahushai. And he spake by his servant Elijah the Tishbite, saying, By the portion of Jezebel shall dogs eat the flesh of Jezebel, and the carcass of Jezebel shall be as dung upon the face of the field, and the portion of Jezreel, so they shall not say, This is Jezebel. And so that's what the Most High dealt with her, man. Okay. All these things, like I was pulling today, earthquakes, pestilence, wild beasts, police shootings, there's all the judgment of the Haobah Shemiel Shaman. Okay? And as the days count, okay, and of course the trade war, which deals with the economy, man. And that's why all you brothers gotta watch, man. And all you brothers out there, like I've been saying before, if you got the knowledge, man, push, man. Don't wait, man. Do not wait until it's too late. Okay? You want to be covered, man. You want to be a part of the ministry, man. Right? You want to be a part of the ministry, man. And death to that guy, man. He's looking to see if I'm still doing the work. Alright? Because they sent him over here. Yeah, let me read this. It says, um, just send that demon over here to try to hinder the word, man. The Lord gonna deal with that nigga, man. What's the All right? How about Rayam, that devil, man? Okay. Wa in Ashiyam, wa Abadiyam, wa Havadiyam, wa Bashapatiyam. All right. I'll call that demon, okay? Baba Kasha, Baba Kasha, Baba Kasha. How about Shimi Al Shah for Wada Ahmad, man? Right? Death to that guy, man. Because he's doing a bit in the Satan, man. Trying to trying to uh, drown the word out with some bullshit. And he's not even talented. Okay? So the most I gonna deal with that guy, man. Because this is not no laughing matter. Read it about the judgments of the Lord right now. The Most High sent death angels, pestilences, okay, teeth of wild beasts. And you wonder why you Negroes get gunned down the way you get gunned down. And you expect us to shed a tear for you? We ain't shedding a tear for you niggas out there, man. You wicked ass niggas, man. You grimy coons, man. May the Most High slay more you niggas out here, man. Because when the men of the Most High come out here and warn your ass. You don't take heed, man. All right, let me read some next precepts. We can't put curses on people. Matter of fact, let me read a curse. It's a good curse to say to your enemies. Let's read Psalms 109th chapter. Man. Psalms 109. King David said, Psalms 109, verse 5, and they have rewarded me evil for good and hatred for my love. This is a curse right here. People say you can't curse. This is a curse. Most of those Psalms are curses. Verse 6, set thou a wicked man over him, and let Satan stand at his right hand. That's a curse, man. It says, when he shall be judged, let him be condemned. Let his prayer become sin. See, that's a curse. Let his days be few, and let another take his office. Let his children be fatherless, and his wife a widow, man. This is King David setting up some powerful curses. Let his children be continually vagabonds and beg. Let them seek their bread out of desolate places. And that's, that is going to happen to two-thirds of our people, man. Okay? Let the extortioner catch all that he has, and let the stranger spoil his labor. Let there be none to extend mercy unto him, neither be able to favor his fatherless children, man. That whole chapter's bad, man. That's a curse right there, man. Okay, and Jeremiah also sent them curses. Let me read Jeremiah 11, 14. Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 14. Therefore, 
pray not down for this people. Neither lift their cry or pray for them. No, 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 no. lift them and cry or pray for them. For I will not hear them in the time that they cry up to me. So the most I say you're not going to hear y'all, man. Okay? And this is what happened to Jerusalem when they got slain. Let me read a book of Lamentation. I clap their hands at thee. They hiss and wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem, saying, This is a city that men call the perfection of beauty, the joy of the whole earth. That's what they saying to you, Jake Snell. Like, these niggas are the Jews? No way, man. No way. That's why James White and both Camp alone, them guys, they can't, they can't, they can't fathom that. Okay, because they used to see you Negroes bug the hell up. Alright? But it says, All thine enemies have opened up their mouth against thee. They hiss and gnash their teeth. They say, We swallowed her up. Certainly, this is the day we looked for. For we found, we have seen it. Okay? And that's going to happen again. Verse 17, Yahabah Shimi al Shah have done that which he had devised, man. It was really the Most High. Okay, who used the Babylonians to punish you Israelites, man. Right? He had fulfilled this word that he had commanded in the days of old. He had thrown down. He had not pity. He had caused thine enemy to rejoice over thee. He had set up the horn of thine adversaries. Which is power. The Most High did that, man. Like we said, he's going to do it again. Okay, and the spirit has just been heavy on cursing the niggas out lately, man. I don't know. That's just the spirit of Yahweh about Shemuel Shab, because the Most High is gonna start with y'all first. He says, "Their heart cried unto the Lord, O wall of the daughter of Zion. Their tears run down like a river day and night. Give thyself no rest, let the apple of thine eye cease. Arise, cry out in the night." 
in thy beginning of the watches pour out thine heart like water before the face of the Lord lift up thy hands toward him for the life of thy young children that faint for hunger in the top of every street they were dying of hunger man famine man it's the most high man we read in the accounts right now the destruction of Jerusalem behold the Yahabah Shimei Shah consider to whom thou hast done this shall the woman eat their fruit they will eat their own children and children of a span long that's how bad the famine was man. okay so this is why we get on our people man because severe times is coming severe judgment is coming judgment without mercy is coming man okay it says um and the children they span long shall the priest and the prophet be slain in the sanctuary of the Lord the young and the old lie on the ground in the streets my virgins young women and young men are fallen by the sword that has slain them in the day of thine anger that has killed and not pity man. okay and right now it's not like talking on deaf ears but everything that's in this book gonna come to pass again man. okay Jakes, you don't know the terror of the Lord, man. Lord, that's bar. You don't know the terror of the Lord, man. See what I'm saying? Y'all gonna find out, man. And this guy, he over there calling on Allah, right? He's a demon, man. Come on, Allah, rock bottom. See? I read what's gonna happen to him. See, we still on? That word going out, boy. Word going out. Let me read this out. Satan trying to draw this word out. That he that make mention of the Lord keep not silent, man. We're gonna push this word no matter what, man. Can't hunt the end of this word, man. You out of order, man. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 5. Deuteronomy 13 and 6. I'm talking about all our rugba. Jake don't get it, man. First of all, them Muslims, all that praying to Allah can't save them for them bombs dropping on their ass. Okay? Allah is not his name. Allah just means God or power. But God or power is not his name. Alright? Deuteronomy chapter 13 verse 6. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter... The wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is thine own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods like him. That all our bullshit, man. Okay? Or even that white Jesus, man. Anything other than Yahweh Shem Yahshah, which thou hast known, which thou hast not known, nor thy fathers, namely of the gods of the people which are round about thee, nigh unto thee, or far off from thee, from one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth. Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him. Neither shall thy eye pity him, your own mother or brother. They tell you, let's go serve another God, you ain't supposed to have pity on him. And no pity, we just read in the book of Lamentation, is going to be shown to you, James, man. Alright? Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him. Neither shall thy eye pity him. Neither shall thou spear. Neither neither shall I conceal him but thou shalt surely kill him thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death and afterwards the hand of all the people man that's the scriptures right there boy if any man tell you let's go serve another God secretly the truth says your hand's supposed to be upon that man see right now we can't do it but it's gonna happen okay you know they call it Allah Rockbar like it's some kind of joke, man. Everything is funny to our people, man. Alright? But laughing time is, is 
coming to an end, man. That's why the most I said Jeremiah 16, 16. It's about to shut. Let me, I got to look at it carefully. Mm -hmm. Right there, but uh, we read this. 